So in the last video, I discussed the differences between these two motors. This is the, um, these are the two primary prototype Hyperlite motors that we've been testing or working on with a bunch of other motors as well. These are the primary ones that we've been working on to try and make the next Hyperlite motor. And this one on the right is made by T-Motor. I gave T-Motor a list of all the things I wanted in a motor, everything I could think of that I wanted in a motor, and they made me exactly that motor. Unfortunately, they couldn't actually make enough of them to be meaningful by I mean, it, they, wouldn't, they couldn't even make enough for me to be meaningful, so we couldn't use them. We had to go back to Brother Hobby, and I gave Brother Hobby the same list, but they said, you know, we're just going to make you a good motor. And they made us a good motor, and this is the Brother Hobby motor. It is not anything like the T-Motor. It's totally different. It's four and a half grams lighter, shockingly, but it does perform very, very similar to the T-Motor, which is amazing. But I still prefer the T-Motor quite a bit to the Brother Hobby, and I think a lot of that has to do with the KV. So... Disclaimer up front, what I'm going to be talking about is, is kind of totally off the wall. I really don't know everything. I don't know much about what I'm talking about. This is all just from experience of testing tons and tons of motors and talking with a bunch of motor engineers and Ryan Harrell, and which I consider the authority on mini quads, mini quad motors. And it's just, it's, it's just interesting. It's something that I try to do. I just want to know how things may work so that it may help me in the future to figure out what's what. So a while back, I realized that I preferred slightly higher KV on 4S for Acro. I felt like 26, 2700 KV just had better control, better performance overall, better control performance overall. And I really, really preferred it. And I didn't know why. And I talked to Ryan about it and I was like, why, why is this? This doesn't make any sense. Doesn't higher KV have less torque because you know, it's higher RPM. And uh, he gave me some answer. I don't even remember, but um, we just kind of left it at that, and we kind of settled on around 2,500, 2,550 kV for the Hyperlite motor because it was kind of a in the middle number, and it wasn't quite as amp hungry because 27 is kind of unsustainable for 4S, even for Acro, it's a little bit much. So whatever. Then a little bit later, I started testing 6S motors around 1,600 kV motors because we were typically running 2,400 kV on. 4S, so I figured, you know, let's look at the equivalent KV on 6S. I tried 1600, I tried uh, 1550, I tried 1650 KV. It all felt like crap, total crap. I was like, I have no idea what's going on. Once again, I was talking to Ryan. I'm like, what on earth is going on? He's like, I have, I don't really have an answer for you. We don't know. But I figured uh, maybe the motors just aren't up to par. Maybe the batteries aren't good. Maybe the ESCs aren't good. But something is lacking. Something is not there. So I just dropped the whole thing. I was just like, I'll wait for things to catch up. Fast forward to today, and now we are quickly heading towards... 6s which is great but they don't feel quite the same and this is not really going to change the way you think about things or anything you really do it's just interesting to think about and not many people even feel this but to me 6s just feels like it has less control less performance not speed and power or anything like that just just less control performance and i also realized that we're running higher equivalent kvs on 6s than we are on 4S. So the standard 6S KV is typically 1700 or 1750. The equivalent KV in 4S, that's actually 26, around 2600 KV on 4S. So why are we running higher equivalent KV on 6S? Nobody really has an answer for me about that. Additionally, when I was testing a bunch of motors, I actually found that I preferred even higher KV for control performance for Acro. Like I found around 1850 to 1950 kV to be way better for control. Feels way better in the air. And I give, a, give that a range because it depends heavily on how the motor is constructed. And that's why when I was testing so many motors and so many different kVs, I couldn't really nail down what I preferred the most. I, I couldn't nail down if I liked this kV, that kV, this motor, that motor. I couldn't figure out what worked for me because the kV and the motor construction have to be very carefully matched. The kV has to be matched for what the motor construction can do in order to get the optimal performance out of the motor. So every motor has a different optimal KV and there's a range. There's a total big range. So one motor might be 1800, one motor might be 1900, one motor might be 1750. We don't know. So now let's think about why on earth are we running higher equivalent KVs on 6S? So let's talk about torque. Torque is kind of an elusive term. I don't really like it because I don't think people are really using it. A lot of people just aren't using it maybe not using it correctly at least i wasn't using it correctly in the past i don't really have a full understanding of it i don't have I still don't have a full understanding of it now but maybe i have a little bit more insight so let's think about how torque is usually thought about torque is usually thought about like on a truck like stump pulling torque the ability to tow something but if you look at that example and compare a truck to like a motorcycle 
they might make the same overall power, but the motorcycle will have no torque and it'll have like 25,000 RPM, whereas the truck will have a ton of torque. But they have the same power. Power is the ability to do work. So what is going on there? That's a totally different example. Let's throw that out the window because that has nothing to do with mini quad motors. Let's think about how a mini quad prop actually spins up and what we use this elusive torque for. So a mini quad motor has to spend energy to spin this prop up to speed. Just like how when you step on the gas on your car, you accelerate up to speed. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of gas. So you gotta step on that pedal to go. But once you get that car up to speed, it doesn't take as much energy to maintain that speed. Similarly with a mini quad prop, once you get this prop up to speed, it doesn't actually take all that much energy to maintain that RPM. So that's why we're able to get a couple of minutes of flight time on such a tiny battery on our quads because we're not always pumping the throttle like crazy and it's not that inefficient to just maintain the prop at a certain RPM. So that's why just cruising, you can get really good flight time. What do we actually use torque for? Torque is used to transition the prop, to move it from high RPM to low RPM, to middle RPM, to high RPM, back and forth, really, really, really fast. And the faster and more accurately you can do that, the better control performance you're gonna have on the motor, on the quad, on everything. And I relate, to, torque to me just means control. More torque equals more control. And that's why I've been moving towards more oversized motors, the 2208s definitely have much more control. I just generally don't like 2300K or 23XX or 24X. I tried all the KVs on all those motors as well. I'll talk about that at the end. So now that we kind of have an understanding, sort of, somewhat what torque is, let's once again look at these motors and the equivalent KVs. So this one is 1900 KV. The equivalent KV in 4S to this 1900 KV motor or 1922 KV motor is actually close to 2900 KV. If somebody was to make a 2900 KV 2208, in 4S, people will be like, no, that's not gonna work. That's ridiculous, too much KV, too much amps, too much, it's just unsustainable, not good. But I'm finding that I actually prefer this motor. Okay, so what might be happening and why did the equivalent KV on 6S not feel correct? So I was talking to Ryan Harrell and he told me a whole bunch of stuff, I read a bunch of his articles, um, and then I looked at his equations, and what he said was that torque is actually directly proportional to amps not voltage. And when you look at the equations, voltage actually cancels out. So what are we doing when we move to 6S? We're dropping the KV way, way down. And we're dropping the amps way, way down because the voltage is higher. So we're essentially just eliminating that factor that creates torque, that creates good performance for us. Now, it doesn't just mean that you know, 6S is less torque, which that's the blasphemous part that I'm presenting here, which is kind of off the wall. 6S to me, I believe I'm pretty confident now that 6S is actually less torque. It's not more torque. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, my 6S quad is super powerful. That might be great, but you're not feeling torque. You're feeling an advantage in battery performance. On 4S, we were pulling tons of amps and we didn't have enough voltage. On 6S, we have enough voltage and we're not pulling as much amps. So the battery is more balanced. It's dishing out the power in a balanced voltage amperage fashion rather than one of them is out of proportion with the other. So if you pumped up the voltage even more, you might actually get even less control performance, which is kind of interesting to think about. Okay, so let's skip that battery thing and just, you know, battery performance is not equal torque. Let's focus more on the motor here. So when we're moving to 6S and we're reducing the KV, we are reducing the amps tremendously. Now that doesn't mean that voltage doesn't increase torque as well. It does, it just does it in a very roundabout way. And I think, the this is me personally, I personally think that maybe the reason why we're running equivalently higher KVs on 6S is because on 6S, you have 22 volts versus 14, 15 volts on 4S. So when you add a little bit more KV, that KV gets multiplied a lot more. And the, and the I, the amps, have to rush up real quick to achieve what you're asking of the motor. So in essence, we're just adding amps back into the system. We're adding inefficiency back into the system because the efficiency is what's killing the control performance, potentially. But disregard the fact that 1900 KV is a little bit unsustainable for uh, 6S Acro, regardless of property running, I still prefer that KV. Um, I did have to kind of chop the top 20 numbers on my throttle endpoint 
to really make it sustainable because it is just too much. But the control performance is a lot better. Racing is a totally different story. This has very little to do with racing. Racing, they run, they can run smaller motors, different motors. Uh, they're usually at high RPM, so the RPMs are always there and the, the amps are always there and you typically have more control, so whatever. And then the other thing that kind of throws a wrench into this whole theory is that, well, if you just keep upping the KV, you're going to get more and more and more and more torque, which is not the case because you live in a physical world and things have limits. So once you surpass the limit of what the motor can actually do, the motors like magnets and stator can actually generate in terms of torque. It can't do any more. The stator gets saturated. It cannot generate any more magnetic field. So you hit that limit there. And what we're doing, I think, by just adding more uh, KV on 6S is really just getting that amp in there, getting those amps in there to saturate the motor. Running cold motors is actually not good. You want to have like medium temperature motors, which indicates that you're properly saturating the stator. You're generating the maximum amount of magnetic field for that stator, potentially in order to get the best performance out of your motor, out of the system and everything that you're running. So the interesting thing about this theory is that it may extrapolate into other motor sizes very nicely. So like I said, 1900 kV is a little bit unsustainable for on a 2208 for 6S operation in Acro, even though that is what I'm generally going to run. And I'm going to be working on what the optimal kV is for the um, Brother Hobby Hyperlite motor. But now let's look at 2306. So 2306 is another very popular size now. I personally hate the 23 stator size and the 24 stator size. I think the, 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 the torque that's added by the wider uh, stator is actually not in the range of RPMs that we're using on mini quad props that are actually capable of doing anything. Like you can't properly load the motor to get it to run properly, whatever, that's besides the point. But the wider stator does seem to limit the top end of the throttle range. That's why I don't like 23. It just feels like it just has nothing in the top end. But maybe running slightly higher KV on a 2306 or a 2307 on 6S is going to be better because you can run the higher KV and you have the limit of the motor's physical properties that it will not draw more amps at the top end because it cannot. It doesn't have the power. I don't know. I can't even explain that. I don't know. But as far as my experience goes, I've tested those motor sizes and when I first tested the 2405, I thought it was the worst motor I've ever flown. I thought it was terrible. I told Sergio, don't, don't sell this motor at all. It's awful. But it went on to be the most popular motor because it was so darn efficient for racing and then I had a bunch of other theories about that as well. I hope this was you know interesting give you something to think about still have no idea what's going on really just kind of some clues here and there and Ryan is doing some further extended testing with some other people and he's trying to uncover more information about this whole scenario and what's what for now if you want to do 6s acrobatics the best performance I found is a 2207.5 or 2208 on around 1850 to 1900 kV, that's probably what you want. If you go past 2100 kV on 6S, it's a little bit much. And also, I'll, uh, add another... I'll go over something else that kind of supports all this as well. So a while ago, we weren't on 6S yet. We were running 4S, and then people started running 5S on their 4S quads for Acro because they're like, oh, this is so much better. This is so much better. Everything about this is better. You get more torque, that word torque and you get like real good performance. And what they were doing was they were just throwing 5S on their 4S quads that were running 23 or 2400 kV motors. And what they're doing is they're just using more kV than they should be for 5S and it's all the same. So it's exactly the same as what I'm saying. They were just seeing more amps out of the system because they're running higher voltage and it was multiplying the kV and it was pulling more amps and they were getting more control performance as a result and it didn't really have much to do with the actual speed and power and punch of the quad because that was of course better, but control is much more important to me. So that's that. I just hope that was really interesting. Thanks for listening. Don't forget the floss. Take care.